Well, we are live here on the Freedom Media Network. This is your host, Kurt Mercadante. Of course, thank you so much for being here. And thank you all those who are listening to this in the future on the Authority Brand Podcast. There are some people joining us live here as we go, and more people will join as we continue. And thank you for joining today. We're, we're, this is another, uh, this is about the second time I'm uh, I am doing this inside a LinkedIn Live where people actually register for it. So I know people will join as, as we continue to go here today. Now, for those of you who are interested in selling more and building an authentic brand, authenticity is one of the four pillars of what I call building an authentic brand. So how can you become truly authentic to increase your authority brand exposure to the right clients to generate more leads and more revenue? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today with my friend, best-selling author, sales trainer extraordinaire, Larry Levine. Larry, thanks so much for joining us today. It's so good to see you again, Kurt. I love hanging yeah. out with you, by the way. Yeah, no, I pre <laughs> and I got to meet you in person in Florida, uh, gosh, a month and a half ago at this point. I can't believe it was that long ago. <laughs> um, for, for everyone who's not familiar with Larry, Larry wrote an incredible book, Selling from the Heart. When you want to talk about auth authenticity, that's what it's all about. And for more than 23 years, Larry has counseled small businesses, entrepreneurs, as well as some of the largest corporations and associations. Wait, that's mine. I, you know what's funny? I was just okay. reading my bio. Dude. Hey, it's live, folks, man. Oh Kurt, I God. love you, man. That was, I was like going, dude, 20, I know what I was doing 23 years ago, Mercadante. Come oh on, Oh my dude. gosh. That's our, That's hilarious. I, I, I'm <laughs> reading, it's like Ron Burgundy, like reading a, whatever you put on the script, he will read it. Man, um, I have, you know what, I got a mush for brains this week. We're uh, right after this, we're getting out of the house because we're, we're showing the house, we're selling our house. And uh, so I, we've got contractors in here. But Larry Levine, Larry has 30 years on the, on the field, in the field sales experience with B2B technology space. He knows what it takes to be a successful sales professional. And of course, and you can see it right behind him, Selling from the Heart. It's his book. It's his company. It's what he's all about. Larry, thanks so much for joining us. So good to be here. And by the so way, good. anyone who's watching this live, whether you're on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, I'm sure you're joining in, whether you're joining us late, whether you're joining us now, whether you're joining us tomorrow, please don't be a lurker. Please, please, please don't be a lurker. Life's about engaging and being in intentional. So jump in, share your name, your city, your town, your state, your country, where in the world you're joining us from. Comments, questions, agreements, disagreements. I'll give several shouts out throughout the show, but don't just be a lurker. If you're joining and you, you really feel strongly about selling more, you want to learn how to sell more, Larry's the guy, man. You got him here for a while. So uh, so please jump in with us. This Hey, you know what, Kurt? I think we're going to have a good time. There's one If there's one thing that everyone's going to come to find out about both of us, we love driving conversation. Dude, I could talk to you all day long. <laughs> it was it was hard to sit in Joe Peachy's boot camp and not talk. You know, we we're we we're gonna get in trouble in the back of the room like like school kids. Um, and Larry, la last year you you came on and I interviewed you about selling from the heart, and you know you talk about it and you're leading a revolution, right, of authenticity in the sales world. And one of the things you talk about, one of the phrases you talk about, and when I when I saw you talk about it, I I was kind of I knew what you were talking about, but I was kind of unsure of your message. And it's not fluff. Um, you talk about empty suits and you talk about selling from the heart, but it's not woo woo and foo foo. It's very straight ahead, no bullshit. Like, like cut it out, stop being an empty suit um, and really be authentic because there's a lot of people, not just in the sales world and business on social media who talk about authenticity, but they pay at lip service, right? No, I totally agree. And, and it's sister, I want to, I'm going to take you back because Kurt, I don't even think you know this story. So I'm about, uh, by the way, I think authenticity is a lifestyle. It's not a light switch. I'm a firm mm -hmm. believer in that. You just, I, I think we're all authentic is what we do with it. And I always say we have choices. It's how we choose to lead our life. So I'm now probably three, four chapters into right and selling from the heart. So I'm taking everyone back. This is probably the spring two years ago, Kurt. And I was fully prepared for the backlash. I was fully prepared for, you call them lurkers. Or I, by the way, I love that term lurkers. I think it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. But I was prepared for the people that are 
were engaging in my stuff, what were they going to say? Because what I was doing is I'm a big believer that you have to educate it. I, you know, I use the three E's. You got to educate, engage, and excite your audience into conversation. So what I was doing is I was building a tribe. I was building a community around selling from the heart as I was writing the book. And I would, as I finished a chapter, I would drip it out. They have a cover of selling from the heart. And I'd say, hey, this is what you can expect in the first chapter. This is what you can expect in the second chapter and so forth. So now I get to about the fourth chapter. And I get somebody who asked me to connect based on what they saw on LinkedIn. And I'm condensing this story. I have saved it in my LinkedIn message center because I go back and review it all the time. And I laugh my ass off when I read it. But basically, the person asked me to connect. I sent my pleasantries back like I normally do. And within a couple sentences, this individual says, hey, Larry, I'd like to know the case studies and the research that you put into selling from the heart. Hmm. I go, what? This is this A, this is totally bizarre, right? Because this just got thrown at me from right field. And so I played along with it. And so we talk about a lot of times, you know, content becomes bait on a hook for a conversation. Well, the guy was baiting me, which was fine, right? And I say, yeah. hey, full disclosure, I have no PhD in psychology. I have no master's in human behavior, anything like that. My PhD came from getting the crap kicked out of me selling copiers my whole life in L.A., I'm bringing a very unique twist, I call it, on authenticity and how you bring caring, appreciation, and respect to the sales world. And I further went on to say, hey, you can either buy the book or don't. I, at this point, I don't care. Yeah. Then this person goes on, and we're driving this back and forth, and this person's hooked me, Kurt, right? Hooked me into a conversation, and I started to take it personal. And right before we started to disengage from the conversation, this individual goes, Larry, I want you to look up the word self-deception or deception. Pardon me. And I go, what the hell is going on? So I stopped the conversation. I went to Google like everybody else does. I put in deception. I'm trying to look at the definitions around deception based on the context of the message. And so I reply back to this individual and this, guy, this individual says, no, that's not where I'm going. Where I'm going is I've read every book around authenticity, EI, EQ. And I question everybody who writes around it. Do you lead an authentic lifestyle? Or are you writing about it to capitalize on it? Very interesting, right, Kurt? Yeah. And I just, I went on to say, hey, listen, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. This is who I am. I'm giving you me, 100% me. Well, my book comes out September of 2018, and by October, I'm flipping through my Twitter news feed. And all of a sudden, this guy is tweeting out parts of my book, the same huh. person who questioned me. And I go, well, that's kind of cool, right? He bought the book. Because he's deep into the book, right? Because you could download the first three chapters of Selling from the Heart off the website. But he's, this person's way into the book. Yeah, and he's yeah. tweeting it out, and he's tweeting out, and he's tweeting out. So I go back into my LinkedIn message center, and he goes, I said, hey, thanks, right? I insert his name. Hey, thanks for promoting this and tweeting this out. Why? Reply back was, here's my cell phone number. Call me. I just dropped everything, picked up my cell phone, called him. This guy goes, I've been waiting for this call. You really have wrote, written a great book around authenticity. I could tell you're being real. You're being genuine. I said, thanks. And we laugh about it, Kurt, still to this day. And I save that whole LinkedIn message center because I share the story all the time. And that's what fires me up. That's amazing. And, and it reminds me, I, I had uh, their clients right now. And, and you know, when you're, when you're bringing in new clients and, and going through that conversation process, you get questions asked by clients data and whatever results and those things. But it's interesting. One of the questions they asked, you know, because I talk about freedom and living a life of freedom and building a business that gives you that freedom. But they asked, they asked interesting questions. When was the last time you took a vacation? When was the last time they, they asked questions like that because they wanted to make sure that I wasn't full of shit, yeah. that I was talking about freedom. But like you said, not just writing about it, but actually doing it. And this was on the this was on the front end of uh, of the lockdowns and COVID. Uh -huh. 
But I said, listen, I, I would be, uh, here's where I would go if it wasn't for the lockdowns, but we just got back from London, you know, and it was one of those things where it's, it, it's, it is that, like you said, and like he said in that LinkedIn message exchange, there are a lot of people, you know, you see them, some LinkedIn famous people who portray something I'm killing it. I'm crushing it. I'm doing all this stuff. And then behind the scenes, there's some people I'm thinking of specifically are calling different coaches saying, I'm not making any money. I can't do this. And they're out there pitching, building a business and they can't build a business themselves. And I have a friend who gets really fired up about it. And I'm just like, listen, you know what? It's, they're going to get theirs. The the results are going to come to them. They're going to get, I hate to say what they deserve, but the cream rises. And, and, there are other people who are making a ton of money uh, selling vendor products and they, they say it's branding and sales. And really what it is, is they're selling video views. Um, but I think everyone always, it, it, what, what goes around comes around, you know? No, I, I, I totally believe in, and you and I have both had some pretty in-depth conversations over a couple yeah. of adult beverages over the same topic. But th- this is what's interesting is, I'm of the firm belief, right? We can use social platforms however we see fit, right? And, and, and I think that's not the point that, that we're going with this conversation. I totally get it. But I always say you get out of this what you put into it. And I'm a huge Brene Brown junkie. I just love mm-hmm. everything that she writes about. And I remember in The Gifts of Imperfection, she started talking about social media and that social media is a big fantasy land for a lot of people. Which leads me to believe it's like Fantasy Island, right? The plane, the plane, right? (laughs) Is there's so much drama, right? There's so much acting going on on social that it's hard to to really appeal. Is this real or is this Memorex, right? So now I'm dating myself when I say Memorex. But the, the point being is, are you really leading that lifestyle? Or are you dressing it up online? And... I write about it in the book and, and I'm just a, I'm a sales geek and nerd at heart. I love everything about sales. And this has been a tremendously great platform for me to share the message. I did it when I was in corporate sales. I walk a really fine line and I really pay attention, man. What you get, you get, right, Kurt? And you know this because we met through social, but then we kind of broke bread face to face. I don't hide anything. Right. You get what you get, right? Uh, I, I don't fake it. This is exactly who I am. I speak the same way online as I speak face to face. There's no difference. I just use this platform to get the message out in a way. And, and you talk, you know, I, I, I love what you're talking about with like ideal clients and communicating to your right. ideal clients. It's just unfortunately a lot of people who leverage this platform are speaking to other like-minded people just like them, as opposed to speaking to their audience, speaking to their target client and educating them and engaging with them. They're too worried about creating social Pied Piper-esque moments where they get a bunch of followers following them. Yeah, and and there was, you know, I, I came on, for instance, LinkedIn at a time when LinkedIn Live or a LinkedIn video had just started. And, and so there was a community of video creators and like, I was on there because I had just shut down my agency and I was like, well, I'm, I'm here to do business. I've made friends. You're one of them, right? In the process, but I'm here to do business. There were a number of people who are no longer on the platform because they used it almost. There's a lot of people who get caught up in what I call playing business. And so they they get likes and views and they, they get the dopamine hit. Uh-huh. of of all those likes and views they'll go to linkedin events for free they'll travel around the country and there's nothing wrong with that inherently but after a year they're like i i don't understand it i'm getting all these likes and views i'm networking with other people um and i'm i'm i don't have a single client and you know you could apply that to the real world where you know mark hunter who you and i both know talks about networking events and And, you know, you go to these networking events and you think you're selling and you think you're doing work. And really, it's the third straight networking event where they're all the same people. They're like 80 percent realtors. And as Mark said, they're all breathing each other's exhaust. And at the end of the day, you 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 feel like I've worked so hard because I've spent these hours at these networking events. And you're kidding yourself, which 
which I guess, you know, a big part of authenticity, it's not just not kidding others and it's being truthful with others. I, I, I would say maybe, maybe you disagree, but it's knowing who you are and being truthful with yourself, isn't it? <laughs> I 100% agree. And that's why I wrote Selling from the Heart, Kurt, the way I did is you got to work on yourself. You got to work on the inner part of this. And that's the hardest part to work on. And I think I firmly believe in my heart. That's why a lot of people run from it. A, they may, they may uncover what's really going on. They don't want to hear about it. And there's a lot of fear around it. So they play pretend, right? I'm going to set all this aside and I'm going to lead a different lifestyle online. Well, at a certain point in time, that's going to come back and bite you. You know, I talk about it in Sell It From The Heart of Sales Chaos. It's hard to distinguish. And I always say, hey, listen, folks, if you lead a genuine, authentic lifestyle personally, right? Hmm. Close friends, your family, close inner circle, then what prevents you from leading that exact same life professionally? Yeah. That's what that's the biggest question I have for a lot of people. And I have to admit, you know, full disclosure, I struggled with that for a long time. Until I just came to grips and said, man, this stuff's just jacking with me. Yeah. You, I, now it's just, you get what you get. I, I mean, there's no reason to hide. I mean, I always tell people, if you want to get to know me, just ask. I don't hide a freaking thing. Nothing. Zero. I just removed it all. What What are the, um, and, and by the way, I do want to give a shout out. We have a number of people joining us, on, I see, on Twitter and on LinkedIn. If you're joining us, hit that like button. Use the comment button, jump in, share your name, your city, your state, your town, jump in, let us know who you are, where you're joining us from. I know we had a number of people sign up from around the country here and let us know any comments, questions, agreements, disagreements. Uh, if you have disagreements, though, address them to Larry. Don't address them to me. Um, I'll just deflect them back to you. Mercadante, yeah, there you so go. It's all good. <laughs> what? You know, there's a, there's a lot of folks who are afraid, and 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 I'll you know, uh, two years ago I wrote a I wrote a LinkedIn article. It was the the one LinkedIn article I ever wrote that got traction. It got like forty thousand reads, and it was about you know, don't be afraid to piss people off. And some people saw that and said, well, they 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 think I'm advocating like going up to pe random people on the street and like yelling at them or or drawing at them, right? Um, Ben, what's up, Ben from Durham, North Carolina. Great to see you as well, Ben. Thanks for jumping in. Um, and, and, the, but the heart of it was, you know, be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself and, and, and be authentic. There's a lot of people who saw that as every time I try to be authentic, it blows back. It hurts my sales. Uh, my boss doesn't like me, or I'm afraid that's what's going to happen. How do you, for people who are, who have businesses and are going to build a brand and they're, they're really playing make-believe, right? Pretending there's someone else or they're in direct sales. You know, if you're a solopreneur, you're in sales no matter what, right? But how do you get over that fear? And what are some of the risks of being yourself and being authentic? Um, throw that to you. No, I, I would, I'm a big believer in this that the stories in our head are the stories that we tell. And then we act those stories out. Think about that for a second. The stories that we, t that, you know, in our head are the stories that we tell and then we act those out. I think people play, they play the mind game, right? If there's anybody, I, I mean, I'm right there. I was there a long time ago playing mental gymnastics. I do it with the best of them. Sometimes I still do it and to my own detriment. But I share this because I don't think it's as bad as what people portray. And, and I say this for a reason is if I'll just use you as an example, if I'm going to really get to know Kurt and he's going to really get to know me, if I build our very opening of our conversation and how we drive that and how I build a relationship with you, if I build that based on pretending and the only one who's going to know that's me, mm. it's going to weigh on me. And then sooner or later, I'm going, okay, when am I going to get caught, right? I got to, it, it's like the liar, right? They tell one lie after another, after another, and pretty soon they're lying to cover up another lie. Hmm. And I just learned that, you know what? The best way for me to build a relationship with someone is they just either accept me or they don't accept me. 
And it was as plain as that. I did. I always say this isn't rocket science, right? And I go back. I have no, you know, no PhD, no degree in psychology when it comes to all this. It's just that I took relationships and opening conversations and getting to know somebody. I took that to heart because I knew that the way to really connect to somebody is you have to be relatable. You have to be the real deal. And it, and it's so interesting because. Just society in general, there, there's a lack of trust everywhere. So it's already everyone's sizing everybody up in conversations, right? I can almost guarantee that you did that with me. I know I did that with you, and I'm not saying it in a, in a negative way. It's sure. just that's who we are. That's ingrained in us. Yeah. So I just mentally broke that down, and I said, hey, you know what? I can't please everybody. But if, if you really want to get to know me, then I'm throwing it out there. And when I say I'm throwing it out there, you get what you get. And that took me a while to figure that one out and come to grips with it. Because I would hide just like everybody else hides. Yeah. And it, and it, and it ends up screwing with you. But if I'm, gonna meet, if, if I'm meeting somebody, you get what you get. I love shaking hands, well, you know, virtually and face-to-face -face when you can, right? But now you can't even do that. But it's just, yeah. I love inviting people into a conversation, and this is what you're going to get, and it's just based on removing the mental barriers. And, and I just say, and throwing it all out there. And, you know, going back to a little bit, you, 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 realize, you mentioned, you know, I, I love talking about coming up, finding your ideal client. One thing that I've learned over the years is, you know, people are like, well, what is ideal client? And there are some basics that it means for everyone, right? People who are going to pay you what you're valued and, and, and for the impact and value you provide. And, you know, I always say it's, the ideal client is going to be the client that doesn't fall in the pain of the ass category, you know. But I, I also think some of that is, and, and some of that by being yourself, you allow them to self-select out before they even get to you, is there's, there's going to be people who just flat out don't get you, don't vibe with you, don't like your style, not you, but all of us. And that's okay, right? I, I think that's almost part of the ideal client piece because I've become very good at weeding people out in the con first conversation. Yeah, they want to give me money, but I know this isn't going to end right because I'm not going to like working with you and I'm, they're not going to like working with me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I take that to there's people that are going to believe your message and there's people that's not going to believe your message. Hmm. Yeah. And when and when we start talking about, you know, ideal clients and so forth, and I always I always love sharing with salespeople, right? Think of some of your best clients that you have right now. You know, create that mental picture. What do they what's that client look like? Right. Your top three or four. I'm not saying by, you know, the one who drives the most revenue with from with you. But who are those clients that that magic happens when you guys communicate, right? You get each other. And if you really peel this back, there's common there's commonalities where you're like minded, you share the same values. They don't nickel and dime you, right? They know that you have their best interests at heart. Right? If you peel this back, there's a lot of that. Then I just say, go find more of those same type of people. It's not rocket science, Kurt, but yeah. it just goes, it goes back to most people. And, I, and when I say most, vast majority are consistently inconsistent with how they go about developing their business. And they take that wing it shotgun approach. They ride the roller coaster when it comes to developing business. When in all actuality, if you developed what your ideal clients were and you built a whole community and a sense of belonging around those, it sure does make prospecting for more of those a lot more enjoyable. But when we don't do that and we just go out and prospect for whatever falls into our lap or whatever we can generate, sometimes you just bring in garbage. Yeah, and it's it, it's funny. I've talked about ideal clients before and customer personas. And it's like some of the comments I've gotten from, you know, from entrepreneurs who, who probably aren't very good at selling is it's like it, you, you would think that I'm talking about like unconstitutional racial profiling. It's like, wait a second. And it's, it's like, it's not that I don't like 
those human beings who aren't my ideal customers. It's not that I don't have empathy for them. And by the way, some of them aren't my ideal customer persona, but they come to me anyways. And if I can help them and we work together, I still do it. I have some clients now who are not in my ideal customer persona that I go out and I call and I reach out to. But there's this misunderstanding of what I, what it is when I say your ideal co- client persona. It's 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 not like, you know, I'm rejecting those people and I refuse to talk to them. It's just when you go out and you brand and you have those intentional conversations with people. I mean, we're having a conversation right now. You're not in my ideal customer persona. But we're still having a conversation, right? There's people yeah. watching us right now who are not in my ideal customer persona. It's not that I don't care about them. It's that, listen, if I have, I, I run a business, so I'm salesperson, janitor, uh, brand, chief branding officer, the coach, the consultant, and all that. I have an <laughs> hour a day in which I do outbound, and I call. Why would I call random people? Why would I waste my time calling people outside my persona, right? You have that persona, but therein goes to the heart of what you just said, which is people just wing it. And, you know, uh, Daryl, Daryl Amy, who, who your co-author on Selling with the Heart, I mean, one of the things, Selling from the Heart, one of the things we talked about was process. And he said, you know, a lot of people have process for everything but sales and marketing. And branding's the same thing. And it's, they, well, I'm throwing money at pay-per-click and that's branding. That ain't branding. You know, <laughs> I'm throwing money at here, but I'm winging everything else. And well, what kind of results are you getting? It's either I don't know or none. <laughs> no, exactly. It, but see, you bring, you bring up a great point, you know, just about prospecting. I do this two hours every single day. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and I fall into that same category that you just mentioned, right? We all wear many hats when we're, you know, solo entrepreneurs. But there, there's one thing that, and I learned this a long time ago. That because I, I was in I was in rooms, right, where I had to beat the phones and I had to just make the dials and create opportunities and create appointments. But then I just said, you know, this is just pure insanity. And what I did at the time was I broke down. So I took like my top 25 clients, Kurt, and I just yeah. I put them all into a spreadsheet. And then once I had their names, their company names, then I put industries and then what I found is that those top 25 clients fell into like four or five industries. And I go, ah, oh, those are my, you know, at the time I didn't know, right? I'm a sales guy who just happens to know something about marketing. All self-taught, by the way. Yeah. As I go, wow, those are four industries. What happens if I go out and find more companies that fit into those industries? And that was my light bulb moment. My conversations became tighter. Now, all of a sudden, instead of making 50 calls, I was making 10 calls to generate four really good, solid conversations that turned into opportunities. But I laser focused in based on my current clients, what industries are in and just found more people who fit into those industries. Yeah. When you break it down like that, it's, it's cookie cuttering, right? It's like you have these three great clients go find more of them. <laughs> what do they look well, like? Well, what do they smell like? You know what? Well, they- <laughs> yeah. And, and, and here's the magic behind it. At some point I started to find this out. They all know each other or they know of each other, right? They know of the company they may not know each other personally, but they're going to know of that company. It sure makes it a whole lot easier hmm. to start engaging and driving conversations that way. When, you know, when we talk about authenticity and, and, um, you know, a big part when you're authentic and we talked about some people may reject you or self opt out, right. About, because you, they don't get your style. They just don't like who you are and, and you are who you are. It's better to find that out on the front end, right. than to get in a pretend you're someone else. Like you said, that weighs on you, but it also leads to frustration, anxiety, uh, and not a good relationship if that client hires you. But when you're authentic too, you you draw the right people in, and you know um, I don't know how I'm sure you've heard it. You know the law of attraction, right? Mm-hmm. Like attracts like, and you put it out there and you bring it in. And there's a lot of you know I'm a believer in the law of attraction, but I also find a lot of people get it wrong in that they look at okay I'm going to put stuff out there, 
and I'm going to draw people in and they stop there. And what they don't realize is you can use law of attraction to bring a lot of people in your orbit, many of whom are your ideal customers, but they'll circle in that orbit for years until you intentionally reach out. And what you talked about, you make those two hours of prospecting calls a day. You know, for a while, I was very good at drawing people in, getting the audience and bringing people in. Until I just added that simple step of picking up the phone or sending a message or whatever, mm -hmm. reaching out to them, all of a sudden, a lot of those people had been sitting there and sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting. And once I just took one step forward, they jumped in and became clients. And, you know, the first thought is like, why didn't they jump in? You know, they knew my message. They knew what I sold. But again, it's about being intentional, right? And, and, and making it easy for them to jump in because you can attract people with your authenticity, but you still got to take a step forward. It, it's, it's, the, it's the age old saying, right? If you ask not, you get not. Yeah. You know, you use the intentional. It, it's just, I find it the same, you know, the same thing is, you know, that's just, that's just use social. I'm just going to use this as a perfect example, Kurt, right? It, it would just be just like with you. I mean, I put content out on a daily basis. Every week I write an article and that goes out and you start seeing the, it and I start seeing patterns. The same people are commenting, right? Liking on it. So you're building that community. And then I see somebody new, give it a right or a comment or something like that. But then right away, I'm on it. Hmm. Hey, thanks for enjoying the article. Hey, I'm just curious, what'd you like about it? Are you open to connecting? So I'm inviting them into my community. And then the, the next thing is, hey, I'm just curious, you know, how open-minded would you be to a conversation? My hit ratio in going from that moment to a conversation is far greater than most. For one simple reason, I've built a genuine, authentic presence online. I invite people into a conversation. I engage with everybody who comments on my stuff. And it just goes back to, and you know this, Kurt, right? And a shout out to Mark Hunter is he's always said, you can't take likes, comments, and shares to the bank. Yeah. I'm a big believer in it, so are you, Kurt. But I'm here to tell everybody it's what you do with those to kickstart a conversation that's gonna get it to the bank. And it's yeah. being proactive and intentional, picking up the phone, driving a message, doing something to show that person you appreciate that they took the time to read your stuff or comment on, on a piece of content. You got to be proactive with this. That's part, of, that's part of when you do this, when you take you know, the social approach, if you do a really great social approach and you engage, it drives your outbound like no other. The, I, um, for some of my workshops back when I gave workshops, uh, live, I have a slide with a grenade, you know, and I, and I would talk about the people who produce content or treat content like a grenade. They throw it and run and never, never look and see where it hits. Um, and I see that a lot. You know, I, I work, I do a lot of work with people in the financial services industry. So financial advisors, solopreneurs, yeah. health insurance people. And a lot of them are like, no, I'm very active on LinkedIn. But I follow them and all their content is like, let's say they're at that, a, 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 you know, uh, I'll pick a brand like a Merrill Lynch or, or they're at they're at a big brand like that. Right. All they do is share like the latest white paper. Or, the, oh, CI, our CIO put out this report last week and they just share it with no yeah. content. And they're like, I'm active and it's not working. And I tell them that's like, you know, and, and then they don't even come back to see if, if someone did comment, they wouldn't even know it. And it's like going to a networking event, taking your, your business card, throwing it at someone 10 feet away and saying, see ya later. And, and then wondering why they didn't call you. Right. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, the, the, the biggest struggle around all, all of what we're talking about is the true engagement, being genuine with things, you know, this is this is my rule of thumb, Kurt. When it comes to all of this, if I po if I take the time to write a great article, if I take the time to to put something out there that I think is going to be informational and educational to people, and somebody takes the time to read it and comment on it, 
it's my responsibility to comment back and drive the conversation. It's no different. Conversation online is absolutely no different than face to face. And I think a lot of people miss the boat. And that's why I said there's a lot of social graffiti going on and spraying of messages. Because it's, hey, you know, I'm throwing stuff out there. I'm throwing stuff out there. Well, you might be attracting people, but are you having conversation with people? There's a huge difference. And I, and I think a lot more people would be successful on this platform if they truly engaged with meaning and connected with meaning to people. But it's hard to do that when you're spraying information out there. And then when somebody comments, you give it a woohoo, right? Or thanks, dude. Or hey, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. I, I'm not saying there's, you know, there's a time and place for that. But if you really want to build an authentic brand, authentic following, engage in authentic conversation, then truly care, engage with that person. That, you know, continue the conversation. It's no different. I mean, you see how you and I communicate back and forth using this. It's no, yeah. it's, it's no different, but it's that intentional way of communicating with people that I think a lot of people miss the boat on on this because they're so worried about, you know, the social soap opera that's going on and they want to be seen, but how many people are really listening and hearing them? Does your brand, uh, how, how does your brand contribute to your bottom line and sales. Yeah, I mean, I walk, talk, and live this stuff, Kurt. So it, I'm going to give a shout out to Peachy on this one because Peachy opened my eyes to this when I really, by the way, Joe Peachy's salt to the earth. So yeah. is his wife, Dawn. Um, I, remember, I remember having a conversation with Joe. Now, this goes back, heck, five plus months ago. And he gave me the best piece of advice I've ever been given in a long time, Kurt. He looks me in the eye. This was, now keep in mind, I, this was face, this was like right at the onset of the situation we're in. I'm having coffee with Joe. And he says, Larry, stay in your lane. Hmm. And, and Kurt, you know Joe. It's a famous line Joe uses all the time. Stay in your lane. Don't veer from your message. Yeah. And I took that to heart. And I doubled down on everything. I live this stuff. And I stay in my lane with my message. I don't veer from it. Selling from the heart and what we're doing inside Selling from the Heart is about bringing sincerity, substance, and heart to the forefront. It's about being real, genuine, caring, compassion, compassionate, and bringing respect to the sales profession. I don't hide from it. I wear my emotions on my sleeves. And I build deep, meaningful relationships with everybody. Everybody that comes in contact with me, I care about. And because of this, it's helped me really drive and grow selling from the heart. For one simple reason. Deep down inside, people want sense of belonging. They want community. It's inherent in who we are. It's just that I'm willing to put it out there and say business this day is personal. Business is absolutely personal. The more I get to know Kurt, the more he opens up. I have a big saying, the more comfortable I make somebody feel, the more comfortable they will be in sharing uncomfortable things. But I go first. And that's hmm. how I that's built out selling from the heart. I, I do, it's not, fun. I do yeah. not hide from any... I, 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 I will tell you anything you want to know. All you got to do is ask. It's so interesting that when, you know, when you talk about brand, you know, branding is not sales and branding and sales are not marketing. Those are, they're three different things, but branding can be fuel that you pour on the top of sales and branding can be that foundation. Right. And, yeah. and it's so funny, you know, I, I, I've interviewed you and you, you and I've become friends. I've interviewed Mark Hunter, Weinberg, you know, uh, and, and, and like Joe Peachy. And it's funny, a lot of them, uh, although Hunt, Hunter's out there a lot doing a lot of slick TV or slick videos and stuff now and everything. But most of them would say, you know, I, I, I don't do anything with, in terms of branding I, and I don't do much. You know, Peachy says that all the time. He's ranked number one, number one sales tr trainer by like global. I don't have a brand, but 
that assumes brand is something that you spend money on or something. And I would argue that all of you have very strong brands. You know, you know, you go on Twitter and Weinberg is just a very straight ahead. You know, he's, he's tweeting about the Cardinals and he's yep. tweeting about his Porsche and he's tweeting about other pieces and he engages with people. Or, he's, a beating strong cr- or he's beating the crap out of me about the Dodgers, Kurt. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which is, you know, um, <laughs> And, and he, but that's a brand, you know, peachy. I always tell this story. Uh, so Joe peachy for, for those listening, um, you know, I've interviewed him before, uh, Dawn peachy. I interviewed last week and, and, uh, you will have, for those listening to the podcast, you will have already heard my interview with Dawn about LinkedIn, but Joe, his big thing is pick, he picks up the phone and he puts out a texting number and he taught me this and I do it now. But he's got a text sales edge to 55678, and there's some free downloads. Well, his big thing is the phone. And I was driving with my family to Lake of the Ozarks last August for a vacation. It was like a 17 hour drive. And I'm listening to podcasts. I was listening to the sales podcast, and I'm listening to Peachy's podcast. And he's talking about the importance of doing what you say you're going to do, which to me is part of building a brand. It's not, you're not, not, you don't have to spend money on it. So I listened to that episode. He gives the texting thing and I'm interested in finding out, well, what, how does he do the texting thing? I text him. I'm driving three minutes. How long did it take you for, how, how long did he call you back? About three minutes. And I looked down and it says or, Orlando. And I says, I, I said to my, my wife, I said, you gotta be shit me. She says, what? I said, hold on a second. I, I pick up the phone. He goes, hi, this is Joe Peach. I start laughing. He's like, what are you laughing about? I said, this is Kurt Mercadon. I told him the story and I said, Joe, you say you don't have a brand, but you just did what you say you're going to do, which is what you said on your podcast, which goes to the heart of authenticity, which is do what you say you're going to do and be the person that at the barbecue place, when you and I are sharing drinks, that you are on a LinkedIn video. And somebody may hate that, but that's Fine. You're being authentic. You're being true to who you are. Yeah, and and it's uh, that's why I said you know the very beginning. I'm just a sales nerd. I love everything about sales. But I I, rem- I remember back, Kurt. Um, this was like 2005, 2006. So was that 15, 15 ish year, 15 plus years ago? Yeah. Um, I hired my first business coach. Best investment I ever made in my whole life, Kurt. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for that person stepping into my life and me making an investment in myself with this person. Because it was about that time that I started to realize that people were hiding behind voicemail and email. And long story short, this person taught me what it was like to live online. At that time, he used the word online sandbox that I kind of just ripped off and kind of made it my own. But he taught me how to build up my presence online, how to walk, how to talk. He was, that's where I really learned who I was and how to mirror and replicate this. And so all I did was just keep doing that. And it's how I was raised. I was just raised in a way that you, that you'd consistently do the same things. And if you do the same things consistently over time, and especially in sales, it works. It's the foundational nature of all of this. And I just took that to heart and I have an you know, obsessive compulsive behavior anyway. So when I latch onto something, I just do it. Yeah. And I started to see success with it. And I go, man, I love this stuff. And I just started consistently doing it. I had no idea I was building a brand or anything like that. I'm just a sales guy. And that's what I did with selling from the heart. It's no different than when the Selling from the Heart podcast was born and then the book was born, the message starts coming out and so forth. I was just consistently just delivering the message and building around it. But I just happen to be a sales guy who knows something about marketing. I'm not a marketing expert by no means. I'm just a sales guy who uses all the tools that are out there. And I built a business around it. It's no different than if you're a solo entrepreneur or if you're a a banking professional or, or you work in an office somewhere. We all have these tools available to us. It's what we do with it. Yeah. And, and, and the fact is that they are tools 
you know, and and the tools of today might be different than the tools of tomorrow. And and a lot of folks try to rewrite the principles, but the principles are the same now that they were 20 years ago. And I like to say that the, the quality of Ernest Hemingway's novel wasn't based on the type of typewriter he used. Yeah. And that typewriter is a tool, just like LinkedIn's a tool or Twitter's a tool. And if you stick to the principles rather than build your business around shiny objects and what might be here today and gone tomorrow, you know, you're going in the wrong direction and it's a, it's a house of cards, isn't it? it it's, <laughs> oh, so I, I remember one of the very first books I read, Kurt, this was early on in my sales career was How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Yeah. Classic, classic book. Now that book's what, 87, 88 years old, something like that is written in the, you know, mid to late 30s. And the core principles of the book is how to build relationships and change the way people think. Mm -hmm. I took that to heart. Now I grew, I grew up in an analog world and I had to learn digital. So that book played a real big part in how I built relationships and changed the way people think because I had to use the phone and it was face to face. Kurt, that was it. And then along comes the transition to digital, which opened up more levels of communication, new technology tools and so forth. But rather than chase the shiny objects, the core foundation of who I was was built in an analog world, which was phone face to face. Hmm. All the other tools that I became accustomed to using, I still applied the same principles, building relationships and changing the way people think. That it's such a great lesson because I, I have what I call the four pillars of an authority brand. And the first one's attention, but it's the last one we work on. But it's usually attention is where people start and stop when yeah. it comes to branding. They want the attention, they want the eyeballs. And it's like there it's like four to ten thousand ads a day is what the average American gets. It's like so you're competing for attention. So if that's all you're doing. But then you get into accuracy. That's a, the next pillar, which is ideal client. We've talked about that. Right. Then you get into alignment, and that's a message that talks about the outcomes and the impact your clients get. But then you get to authenticity, which is showing up consistently, doing what you say you're going to do, relationships. Then you look at attention. Like, where are your clients? Where do they live? Online, geographically, in the real world, whatever. What are their interests? Then you chart the path to get there, which may or may not involve a digital tool. Or, you know, it may involve, you know, it's funny. It's, it's so interesting. I asked, uh, this was last summer and I interviewed, it's back to Joe Peachy, right? But I interviewed him. I said, what? And he was, he was just, I was just fascinated. He was totally, you know, he built a multi six figure Amway business cold calling. Like who does that? Like, who does that? It, you know, it, I'm sure they had the parties, but he said they moved to a town in Florida. They didn't know anyone. You know, so you think of Amway, you think of multi-level marketing. It's like, oh, I'm going to invite four people over and have a party. It's like, he just dialed for, di like, amazing. So I'm talking, so I said, what would you do if the internet was gone tomorrow? And he said, I I'd pick out a phone book. Yeah. And a lot of people, when you put your eggs all in that basket, it's like, what would happen if the internet ended tomorrow. And I, I laugh about it because back in, I'd say March or April, it's gotten better. But when everyone started locking down and working from home, doing these live streams was very frustrating. It's the internet, the bandwidth was going down sure. and there were a lot of news stories that they were gonna shut it down. And I'm thinking, wow, that was, that was, was I predicting it when I asked Joe that question? We better get a good, strong foundation because if, if, if your only sales vehicle is throwing content out on a video out on LinkedIn, what if that goes away? Yeah, oh, wow. I, I have a strong opinion on that, but it's, it, and I, I agree. But at a certain point in time, Kurt, people have to engage in conversation. Yeah. Right? And, and, and uh, Hey, can I share a story? I think it's going to relate to this. Would you allow me to share yeah, a story? Please, so, please do. Yeah. Um, 
So I want to take care. This is this is a shout out to my mother in law, but she wasn't my mother in law at the time that this story was told to me. So I'm going to take you and your listeners back. This goes back about 30 years ago, but it's really going to cement what you just said, Kurt. And it's foundational in nature, and you'll understand where I'm going with this in a second. So, by the way, I love my mother in law. My mother in law's from Mississippi, my father in law's from Oklahoma. <laughs> We don't have to go any farther, right? They're, they're redneck as redneck gets, and I love <laughs> every bit of it, right? I married into that family, and I, do, I love them all. So here I am. I'm dating my wife. Well, at that time, she wasn't my wife, so I'm dating my wife. And her mom sensed it was getting serious, right? She knew it. Her dad knew it. I mean, we knew. So we're all sitting around the dinner table one night. And so now I'm, I'm kind of fresh into my sales career as well. And by the way, you know, my mother-in-law, I love her to death. If she has a sixth grade education, I'd be shocked, right? That's just the way it was at those times in the South. She looked me in the eye, and I'll never forget this, Kurt. She goes, and she calls me boy, right? She knows my name's Larry. Still to this day, she calls (laughs) me boy. And I can't do the Southern accent justice, but just follow along with me. She says, boy. If you can't do the little things right, you'll never be able to do the big things right. Hmm. And then she goes on to say this. She goes, boy, I know you're getting serious with my daughter. All I'm going to ask is you guys start raising your family. And as you look into your career, don't do anything half-ass. Do it 100%. Those two things, Kurt, have been ingrained in my mind forever and a day. Now, how does this relate to our conversation? Well, if you all go out and chase shiny objects, these big shiny lights in front of you, and you fail to do the foundational little things, right? The big things don't play out. It doesn't work that way. There's so many people that are going about doing things half-ass. I'm not here to disrespect anybody. I'm just here to share the story. But the story relates that there's so many people that are trying to cut corners and half-ass going about doing things. The tools like we're using right now, it's a communication vehicle. It's a conversation starter vehicle, right? It's a tool. But at a certain point in time, if you attract an audience, you have to be able to deliver the goods. You have to be able to engage in, in conversation. What's really interesting is Daryl and I are recording a Selling from the Heart podcast. This was just a couple days ago. Special shout out to Ethan Butte from Bomb. Bomb. But he, um, he calls this faceless communication. There's a lot of faceless communication going on out there. Mm. People are hiding behind text message and people are hiding behind emails. Rehumanize, right? He wrote a great book about rehumanizing business. I call it humanizing ourselves through technology. Bring the best version of yourself forward. That's what people are going to latch on to and they really want to get to know. But people will sniff out bull crap and insincerity real fast. And there's a yeah. lot of that floating on out there because people are delivering stuff that they think people want to hear because it's showbiz, the glitz, the glamour. In all actuality, it's not. If you really ask people what they really want, they will tell you. You just have to ask. You have to deliver those sincerity. You have to be real. You have to be genuine. That's what true building relationships are, is when you're authentic self. But when you build it based on some somebody else, you're going to get exposed sooner or later, and then you'll just be an empty suit. The... Um... It's interesting that I, I was having a conversation along these lines with a client yesterday who's Wall Street guy. He's got a quantitative research fund. Um, and, you know, he he talks a lot about the changing nature of media and getting media in the economic world. You know, and, and, and it's just like it is in the political and news world where everything's going at the most extreme person that you can put on TV on the right or the left and start an argument. And he said, even like business news is coming that way. Economic news. He said, CNBC is the same thing. They just want people who are going to have a food fight on TV. And that doesn't benefit us because they'll create you and then they want to destroy you. 
So we're, we're helping him with, with some authentic ways to communicate their thought, leadership, and authority. And, and he, one of the things he kind of marveled at was, you know, Ray Dalio, who wrote the great book, uh -huh. Principles. And he's like, you know, Ray's everywhere. But he's like, it's interesting. Ray's worth $10 billion. He's got all this stuff. He's, you know, well-heeled. all, that. But he does a lot of grainy, kind of just real casual type video stuff. And I said, exactly. I said, the thing is, Ray may pay a bunch of, uh, a lot of money for somebody to follow him around with a camera, but he also pays extra to make it look grainy and authentic. And we had a talk and he said, why do you think that is? I said, I think, you know, for the, for the purpose that you said, people can get slick anywhere. People yeah. can turn on the TV and get slick and they get that. But if you look at even a Gary V, right? The reason Gary V became so popular is for sitting in a nondescript room reviewing wines and spitting it out in like a little spittoon, you know, not being kind of putting on airs. And, you know, Gary Vee, he spends a lot of money to have people follow him around. But some of his stuff is very, is phone on an airplane. It's, you get, oh, I feel like I know Gary V. And you find that now that people want authentic. They want the real person. They want the real you they don't need slick. And I see a lot of people online, they're wondering, I put so much money into my, into the, the background, into this and that, and no one's watching. It's like, just try being, try walking up and down the driveway with your phone and talking. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, there's so much time spent on creating videos. I, I, it, you get what you get, right? I keep going back to this, Kurt. I don't put on a show. I'm all about words matter and message matters. If I'm gonna shoot a video, I have this, or I use the camera on my computer, right? Yep. My, my, the, the camera that's attached to my computer. Yeah. Because I'm more concerned with delivering the message and, and so forth than I am spending three hours putting together shooting a video. I. I now, Grant, I, I don't get it, but there's something out there for everybody. But it's just, I, you know, so many people spend three hours production on a video, and I watch 10 seconds of it, and I go, what the heck am I, what's this all about, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And all you got to do is, I mean, hop on. I'm on my laptop right now. You know, we couldn't figure out, like, it was a white wall, and it annoyed me. And so we did the wall blue. Like, you know, and people are like, what did you do? Oh my gosh, is that a fake background? I'm like, no, it's, you can see it. It's, it's my office. It's a blue yeah. wall because it was easy to do. And I, I can now throw a logo on it if I want, you know, cause yeah. I did, I don't have a background. Like if I had an office in the background, but I don't have it. Um, but people, people worry and fret. And so they don't communicate. You know, they think it's gotta be the perfect thing and it's gotta be polished. And so they don't communicate. Which what's what's worse, not communicating yeah. at all or communicating with a grainy video? Yeah, you know, and and it's and it's interesting. So that's just that's just look at the world that we're in right now. Everyone's in virtual, right? Vast majority of people are in virtual mode. So this this is my, this is my home office. I'm inviting you, Kurt, into my home office. You're seeing me in my home office. It's not a studio, right? It's my home office. You get a clear idea of what I'm all about by looking right. over my shoulder. No green screen, no nothing, no selling from the heart logo. Yeah, I got a selling from the heart, you know, book sitting behind me, you know, picture of one. Yeah. But I don't, I don't worry about the ambiance and all that. You're going to get to know me based on our engagement, our conversation, the words, the messaging and things like that. If you, if people are worried about, you know, the pizzazz and all that, then you know what? I might not be the right person to engage in a conversation with because you're not going to get that from me. By the way, I don't believe you do any work on that desk. It's too clean. And it's, it's just all, it's all uh, books of people you've interviewed. <laughs> 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 Look at how clean that thing is. I dusted, I dusted it for you and I put a bunch of stuff out there for you, Kurt. How's that? Well, it's, I love it. Cause, uh, <laughs> uh, 
Brandon Steiner came out and spoke at my event last week. I know oh, you just had him on. Or last year. Guy. Oh, he's so he's great. And then I just had Art on. You introduced me to Art. Yeah. He was on. And then of course Daryl's book Darryl's and your on, book. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Brent Brent. So Brandon's on um Brandon was on the Selling from the Heart podcast. Oh gosh. Not even a couple months ago. Yeah. I could hear that. I could listen to that dude all day long. He got me so fired up after our podcast. I go, man, I could talk to you for three more hours and just listen to your stories. So I had to go out and get his book. I just got his book. The dude sold dirt. He figured out how to sell dirt. You know, it's it's he, he had an excellent comment, by the way. Mark Hunter actually co- commented on his comment on my post yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, but it was it was uh, it was about uh, building a strong brand foundation. And it's it, similar to what we're talking about today. Forget the tools and the tactics for, at first. Build a strong foundation. Brandon had a great question. And it was, you know, he asked people, if, you're gonna, if you were going to be a hotel, what brand of hotel would you be? Yeah. And it's funny because when you look at the ideal clients and when you look at this, it's like, yeah, what kind of do I want to be? Do I want to build like El Cheapo Express? Or do I want to build the trusted advisor suites? Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know, and uh, that was such a, uh, an interesting question because it goes to the, uh, your clients, your pricing, the quality, how you brand yourself and how you position yourself. Because if you want to be the trusted advisor suites, you'd be nice to people. But listen, the Hotel Bennett here, which is 500 bucks a night, you walk in there and if you're, if you're not going to pay Hotel Bennett prices, you turn around and you walk right out. And that's to the heart of ideal client and messaging and, and your brand and who you are. So it was a great question that Brandon put on that post. <laughs> yeah, because I think I, 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 well, I remember seeing it, but I threw, some, I threw a comment in there and I talk, about, I talk about this all the time. If you don't build a rock solid foundation, right? The four walls and the roof of your social foundation will crumble. Yeah. And it goes back to... You say attract. I, I'm going to use visible and valuable for the sake of this conversation. Sure. There's there's too many people, and and I think they're both right. Is how you go about doing it, Kurt. There's too many people that are worried about getting seen, but after mm-hmm. a while they have nothing to say. They're so worried about the attention and the visibility that after a while there's nothing left in the tank. I'm from the mindset of valuable, learn your, learn the valuable insights that you bring, right? Learn the inner part of who you are, bring that valuable version of yourself to the forefront. That's your foundation. Now go out and get seen, invite people into your house. You got a strong foundation. That's the motto. That's just what I took to heart. And that's how I held myself accountable. That's how I built my social presence online when I was in corporate sales. And when I started doing this. It's, I I love how you put that and, 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 and bringing it full circle too, in terms of conversations and having more meaningful conversations. If you're having more meaningful conversations, not only are you learning consistently, But many of the ideas for content that I have come from those conversations. And I find (laughs) that a lot of the people who aren't having conversations and who just want to spray and pray, throw the grenade of content and walk away, their tank runs dry as well because the more conversations you have, I mean – I'll, I'll go back and I'll reflect, you know, one of the, one of the funniest things, and, and you said that you go back and listen to Brandon's, uh, uh podcast and it's, and it's interesting. And, and if you don't, people who don't have podcasts might think this is weird. I go back and I listen to every yeah. podcast interview. As soon as it airs, I go for my walk because when we're in the conversation, we're in the conversation. Sure. Sometimes I miss some things. I go back and I listen. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, I'll go back and listen. I'll reflect on this conversation and it may spur four new podcast episode ideas and three videos or, you know what I mean? So that con- the, 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 having the meaningful conversations, which is part of authenticity as well, helps you to 
if you close yourself in a room and do nothing and say, I'm going to make 20 LinkedIn videos. Well, great. Where are you coming up with the ideas? Yeah. Maybe you run, run out of steam to your point after five, but you're having conversations. You're, you're being authentic. It's easier to create content because you don't have to think about it. It just yep. is who you are. Exactly. hundred percent. So good. So Larry, I'll give you the final word here. When it comes to building authenticity, and someone's like, oh, this is great. Well, I'm going to build my brand. I'm going to sell more. Where do I start? I'm afraid of being myself. I don't want to put myself out there. What do you say to someone like that? Where do they start? Uh, I, I, would, I would say this. I mean, sorry, dude, but this is a shameless plug. Yeah. Go get the, go get the book. Go get Selling from the Heart. Download the Self-Reflection Journal and pay close attention to the first three chapters of selling from the heart. I say this with all sincerity, Kurt, is I talk about self-awareness and self-reflection a lot. And if you want to build a brand, get to know yourself. It requires you to do some soul searching. And, and I, I, I truly believe in my heart that everybody is authentic. It's what we do with it. But in order to, I always say the inner heart work, right? The inner heart being H-E-A-R-T, not hard. The inner heart work's the hardest work. It's really getting in tune with who you are. I encourage people, spend the time every morning, capture the morning really, really well. Spend 30 minutes working on you, uncovering who you are, right? Spend time with your significant other, people who love and respect you the most. Ask them, you know, what words would you use to describe me? Start finding and uncovering that out. Ask the tough questions. I'm here to tell you the tough questions about yourself is going to make you better. It's the feedback and critique you get. But you got to be willing to do it. Self-reflect every single day. Uncover who you are. Believe in yourself. Work on it every single day. I do it. I work on myself 45 minutes every single day. Hmm. Even, even when I don't feel like it, I work on myself. I uncover who I am. I get in tune with who I am. Once you can do that, start building upon that and start building out who you are. You know who you are deep down inside. And I say stop pretending to be somebody else because that's what society is or that's what other people are. Self-reflect, become self-aware, start believing in yourself, your confidence will soar, and go to market with it. And whether you are listening to this on the podcast or watching us live, sellingfromtheheart.net is where you can learn more about Larry. Grab the book. Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. It's, it's been a pleasure. This is awesome. I, I mean, we could keep this thing going, but... Yeah, we time. could. I, I, I gotta go. I, I gotta go show my house in, in less than an hour. We're uh, <laughs> we uh, we're having a we have another uh, showing coming up. So it's it's one of those interesting times where it's like all of a sudden get out of the house. We got to clear out of the house, and we have four kids. So we've become very adept at the world's fastest cleaning and uh, and organizing. So I appreciate it, Larry. Dude, it's, it's my pleasure. I mad props. I love you and respect you, and I can't wait to see you again. Likewise, man. Likewise. Right, take care. Thanks, everyone, for joining, and thanks, everyone, for listening.